Well, I declare the spirit of the Lord God is upon you because he has and he is anointing you. I want to welcome you to day two, Proof Producers. What must we do that we might work the works of God? Don Mandel is with us today. Mark Masson, we're greeting you from the incredible Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center. We want to go straight into the message today. Brother Srilla was bringing us the answer to what he calls the big question. You know, it's important to God what questions we have for ourselves and for him. And I don't think outside of our salvation that there's a greater question that God is waiting for us to ask him. So if you are ready, Let's welcome the wonderful Holy Spirit. What an anointing, what a presence of God in Denver, Colorado, 1983. The voice, the man, the ministry of Mara Srillo may be greater today than ever before. So if you are ready to answer the big question, I want you to shout, I am ready. And welcome once again, God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. All truth is parallel. God raised up many years ago a people. They were called Jews, Israelites, Hebrews. God raised them up for a divine purpose. Almost all the peoples of the world during the time of the Jews had gods. But God raised up the Jew. So that through the Jew, God could show to the whole world that there was not five gods, that they were not made out of clay or wood or stubble or precious metal. God used the Jew to show to the world that there was only one true God and he was a living God and his name is Jehovah. Did you know that the only way the heathen ever knew about Jehovah God was through the Jew? They prayed to the other gods, but nothing happened. They cut themselves, but nothing happened. They fell down, down before those idols, but nothing happened. <coughs> but the Jews served a God who could open the seas, who could roll back the rivers, who could open the earth and swallow walls, who could close the mouths of lions, who could quench the violence of fire, who could send fire out of heaven, who could feed two million people for 40 years without planting a crop. <laughs> Brother, and when the Jews came marching against the heathen, do you think the heathen stopped and said, now, 
Watch out. Here come those Jews. They've got sophisticated weapons. They've got armies with secret warfare that we don't know anything about. Oh, no. Brother, when the heathen heard that the Jews were coming, they ran and they said, Look out. Here comes the Jews who serve a God who answers a Now, God raised up the church for a divine purpose. The only worry that the world knew that the Jews' God was alive because of what they saw manifested through the life of the Jew as Jehovah God revealed himself and made himself known. <laughs> Brother, that's why those Jews could strut like they strutted and act like they acted and talk like they talked. What would you do if you came out of a fierce fire at furnace and the hairs on your head weren't even seen? <laughs> God raised up the church as he raised up the Jew, because you and I, so to speak, now today, are God's spiritual Israel. Amen. You see, because he that's a Jew now is not one that is a Jew outwardly, but he that's a Jew now is one that is a Jew inwardly that's had his heart And God raised us up for a purpose. Do you know what the purpose of the church of Jesus Christ is? God raised up the church to show to the world as he raised up the Jew to show to the world that Jehovah is God. God raised up the church of Jesus Christ to show to the world that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and that he lives. He is not dead. The grave could not hold him, brother. Chains could not bind him, but Jesus Christ was here on earth. He went into a synagogue one day and he found those that should be praying and ministering to the needs of the people. He found them buying and selling. His heart was so filled with righteous indignation that he girded himself. And the Bible says he went in and he overthrew the money changers' tables. And he took a whip. Now, I'm not suggesting you go do that to your church next Sunday morning. But how many of you know that the message that Jesus brought in that synagogue is the message that needs to be heralded in our modernistic churches today? Jesus said, my father's house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. You're not fulfilled 
fulfilling the purpose why the synagogue was brought about for in the first place. You're not fulfilling the purpose. And I don't believe that unless God does something in the structure of our churches and our denominations today, unless he shakes them, unless a breaking of the Spirit comes that changes the one song, the two announcements, the four-point message, the shaking of the hand at the back of the door, the patting on the back, the displaying of our bonnets and our beautiful clothes that we strut around to come in church with on Sunday morning. Unless God breaks that structure, the house of God is not a place where we have a form of godliness and where we deny His power. Do you know what Jesus did? Do you know what he did? I'll tell you what he did. When he got through casting out the money changers over through the tables, he sent his disciples out to the highways and the byways and to the hedges. He said, go on out in the street corner. And he said, find me the blind and find me the lame and find me the deaf and find me the dumb and bring me the sick. I'll stand here and I'll wait for you. Go get me the sick and I'll show you the purpose for this synagogue. And they brought him the sick and the Bible said he healed them there. In the house of God. The church. And that doesn't mean a particular denomination. When Brother Sunil talks about the church, I'm talking about Catholics. But don't look at me like that. I'm talking about Baptists. Come on. I'm talking about Presbyterians. You say, why? Because in every one of those groups, brother, are parts of the church, the body of Christ. Blood bought, redeemed children of God. That's what I'm talking about. Not the label we wear around our neck, but the experience that we have in our heart that makes us one. The church of Jesus Christ. Not a man. Not a man. And I'm not anti-men. God raises up his prophets. I believe that they're worthy of honor and respect, but not a man. Not Morris Cirillo. Not a church, not a man, and neither a ministry. We don't focal around a man or a ministry or a manifestation of a gift that is not the healing center. What Jesus demonstrated to us was this, that the healing center of God is the church of Jesus Christ. The healing center is where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst. Now, here comes some of that negative again. Can you take it? Yes. Come on, can you take it? Yes. Put your hands under your chin. Come on, do this. Got the mask off? Yes. If the church of Jesus Christ had been true to the message of redemption, you would not need any special 
evangelistic campaigns in city auditoriums. You wouldn't need anybody like Mara Schriller to come in and pray for the sick in the churches if the church had been faithful to the truth and the task. Come on, let's get the mask off. Our churches are filled with people on every kind of pill and medicine in the world. You say, why, Brother Sorrell? Because the message is not going forth from the pulpit in power and in the demonstration of the Spirit. Remember what Paul said? We read it yesterday in 1 Corinthians 2. He said, I'm not coming to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. I'm not just coming to you and going to stand up here and bring a little doctrine of healing and then anoint you with a little oil at a communion service and say, thy will be done, Lord. Whatever your will is, heal this person. It's no wonder, no wonder we got church filled with people on cancer that can't get delivered. If the church of Jesus Christ was true to its task, our people wouldn't be so quick. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? We are the body of Christ. Christ is in us, though most people don't know that in the church because all they do is have a very small emotional experience with Jesus Christ. Did you know that most Christian, don't get mad at me, most Christianity is psychological. much more loyalty in a lot of other groups and, denom and not denominations a lot of other groups and a lot of other natural clubs in the world than there is in Christianity where we're going to get the mask off and we're going to understand what faith really is But in a capsule form, one little small word, faith in its simplest form, in its simplest form is nothing more than a loyalty to God. God said it and I believe it. It's just that simple. It's a loyalty. It's a loyalty. You know God spoke it. You know he's not a liar and you believe he's gonna do it. And I said, we've got to get some strong orders of priorities here. What do we do? Get sick, try the doctor. Nothing wrong with the doctor. I'm not anti-doctors. I thank God for medicine. And I thank God for the help that people can have. But that's not where it's at for you and I. Now, every person is the product of their environment. You can't help what you believe. It's not your fault. You were raised that way. Brother Shrillo couldn't help what he believed. I was raised a Jew, a traditionalist, one who believed in a historical God. But one day, brother, when I got a breakthrough in my environment, I'm going to tell you something, something happened to me. I was so happy to leave that environment behind me. You couldn't get me back into it for anything in this world. Woo! Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. And for the life of me, I can't understand why you want to stay where you are. I 
was conducting a meeting in a certain city and a minister came to me. He said, Mr. Cirillo, why don't you stop fooling the people? I said to him, what do you mean, sir? He said, you know that the days of miracles are past. Now, I won't tell you the denomination because I'm already in enough trouble here. <laughs> but he was a graduate of a big theological seminary, one of the biggest in America. And he said, you know there's no such thing as a day of miracles. And I looked at him and I said to him, sir, I said, that's true. He said, what? He said, I thought you was praying for the sick. I said, I, I am, I do. He said, well, how can you do that if you don't believe in a day of miracles? I said, you and I have nothing to argue about. I said, because I believe the same as you do. I said, I don't believe in a day of miracles. You see, beloved, we are not heathen. Heathen worship days. We don't worship days. We don't worship Christmas. We don't worship Easter. Now I've got news for you, brother. We don't serve a day. We don't worship a dispensation. Oh, thank God, brother, for all these theologians. We got everything <laughs> dispensed. Sure, we got this dispensation and that dispensation, the other dispensation. We got the people going around like this, so confused. They don't know what's up, what's down, what's in, what's out. Come on. Does this belong here, brothers? Or does it belong here? Does it belong here? Brother, I've got news for you. There's no dispensation of miracles. And I could take you a little deeper, but you're not ready for it, so I won't. I'll just stop right there. All I'll tell you is this, brother. We don't serve a day. We don't serve a dispensation. What do we serve? We serve a God of miracle-working power. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now. I'm just going to tell you something while you're seated. Theology's changed. <laughs> A new denomination is born every year. Come on, did you hear me? Did you hear me? Every year there's a new one coming up somewhere. But I've got news for you, brother. God never changes. He never changes. He's the same. Jesus never changes. The Holy Spirit never changes. They are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, glory be to God. And I'm grateful that Jesus didn't get tricked by going into side issues. Remember what I told you yesterday? We are not talking about building a great church. Neither are we talking about building another organization or a denomination. We are talking about going out of this school and being equipped as Ephesians tells us to do what? To reach a world. Not build a big church. Not to just build a denomination. But a bigger picture for God to do something for the church so that the church can reach the world. Yeah. Jesus stayed true to his task. 
the church of Jesus Christ, not a man, not a ministry, but the church of Jesus Christ, where two or three are gathered together in my name. That's the healing center of God. Not the gift of healing. Not the gift of miracles. Not any manifestation of any gift because I've got news for you. If two of us can get together in the name of the Lord or three of us can get together in the name of the Lord, there we have the absolute full potential of drawing on any gift and any manifestation of God that we need when the need arises. It's there. We draw on it because we are one together. You don't have to go looking around saying, oh, where's the miracle worker? Are you listening to me? Too long, brother, we're going around waiting for the miracle worker. Somebody's sick in the church? Well, go get somebody who's used by God to pray for the sick. What about you? Brother, I'll tell you in my crusades, when something happens and some demon-possessed person starts to act up and they run to me and they say, oh, Brother Shrillo, Brother Shrillo, come, please help us. <laughs> you see, we're, 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 we're nothing more than another glorified Hollywood or circus-type exhibitionist. Who says, brother, that every healing and miracle depends on Mars rule? What about you? Come on, what about you? What about you? Come on, what about you? Now we're going to start a journey this morning. A very special journey. And it will take us into unchartered territory. For most of us, we will enter into truths that we have never explored before. How far do you want God to take your life? And when we're so quick to say, oh God, I want to go all the way. How many of you know that's easy to say emotionally? But in reality, are we really ready for a new dimension? Our text that we are going to be using is one little simple scripture. It is John 6, 28. Listen to it. The disciples and the followers of Jesus just saw the master perform form one of the greatest miracles of his ministry and we're going to go very deep into that miracle this morning and we're going to talk about it and after the Lord walked on the water got into the boat of the disciples and instantly 
which was another great miracle, the boat came immediately to the other side of the shore. When they got out of the boat, they were so astounded by the acts and the works of Jesus Christ that they asked him this question. Listen to it. John 6, 28. I call it the big question. And it's on our banner behind us. Listen to the question. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? They saw the miracle. They saw the feeding of the multitude in the first part of this sixth chapter. A little boy's lunch, five loaves and two fishes that fed a multitude of people on the hillside. They saw the Lord walking on the water. They were in the boat where in a flash, a moment of time, it was picked up and transported from the sea to the other shore as fast as you can blink your eye. And when they got out of that boat, they were so staggered by the phenomena of the supernatural ability of Jesus Christ that they asked him, how can we do these kinds of things? And I want to tell you this morning that the future of the revival movement, the future of the work of God throughout the length and breadth of this entire world, the future lies in the hands of those that find the answer to this question. Remember the second full part of that threefold promise and prophecy of God to us in this school? He said, we will know how. Now, you, are you seeing what I'm talking about? God's a God of purpose. Nothing happens by accident. We will know how to work the works of God. That's God's promise to us before we leave this school. Not next year, not six months from now, but now. Put your hands together. And I don't want you to look at Brother Cyril this morning. I want God to take you right now into that new dimension. I want him to begin that work in your life so deep that there will be no degree of God's power and faith and glory that you will not enter into. Take those hands and don't look at Brother Srila and just look deep into those hands. Open your eyes. Open your eyes and look in your hands. And while you're doing that, listen to the voice of God's soul. The future success of the work of God throughout the length and breadth of the world will lie in the hands of those that find the answer to the big question. God, what shall we do that we might work the works of God. The
the future will not lie in great preachers. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm teaching. In fact, I'd like to clear something up before we go one step further here. Mars Rilla is not the teacher. It is a little slow. One more time. Mars Rilla is not the teacher. Who's the teacher? Say it again. The Holy Spirit. Now, when I say to you that it won't lie in the hands of great preachers, I don't want to offend one preacher that's in this building. Or one preacher, because there are ministers of great churches here, churches of thousands of people that are here. And the last thing I want to do is to hurt you or to offend but the future success and the success of the work of God not only in the future but today and also in the past has never lied in the hands of great preachers I'm not talking about building a great church <laughs> see that's what people don't understand and I'm not talking about building a great denomination of a million or two million or three million people. You say, Brother Solo, what are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about reaching a world. I'm talking about a manifestation that came upon the early church where in the first century on up to the second century after the death of Jesus, the whole world was reached and it was not reached by great preaching. I don't know about you, but I know about this little Jew preacher. I love the soul. And that's what our whole life is all about. It's, it's reaching the lost. That's why I tell you I am not interested in another Qantas club or another successful how-to-do-it type of ministry. We're not here to learn how to build a great big church. We're not learn here to learn how to go out and start another work. God has brought us here for a purpose so that he can interject in our life a new spiritual breakthrough that will make us a part of reaching a world. We're in a race against time. If God's going to take us into a new dimension, how many of you know we're going to have to be willing to get the mask off and we're going to have to be willing to stand spiritually naked before the searchlight of the Holy Spirit. We're in a race against time. That's why I tell you it can't be done by silver-tongued orators. With the mask off, listen, we've got the heathen religions, Buddhism, and Shintoism, and the Asiatic religions that are coming to us from the Far East and coming to us out of India and those countries that are sweeping the disillusioned people of the world. I don't care if you don't get one blessing. 
You say, why, Brother Saul? Because most of you are already blessed to death. You got so many blessings. You got goosebumps on top of goosebumps on top of goosebumps and jerks and jiggles. Come on. Come on. Too long the church of Jesus Christ has come to the point of blessing. And we've stopped here at the point of blessing. Now, something has got to happen to us that will take us and give us a breakthrough that will enable us to go past the point of blessing into a new dimension. Take a look at those hands again this morning. Come on. Come on. And hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. God, what must we do? 2,000 years ago, this church was born. It was not born through great silver tongue orators. I cannot but help from emphasizing that. Why, Brother Srila? Because we have had those orators and those magnificent individuals who can take the scripture and weave it around our heads until we walk out of our services and say, oh, wasn't that wonderful what the pastor said? But it doesn't do anything to change our life to the place where we go back to our homes and change our towns, our cities, our communities, our nation, and our world. Something's wrong. Well, Brother Srillo made us three prophecies, Mark, three prophecies, Don. One of those prophecies was that we would never be the same again. If you were blessed today, if you know that you are on a journey to discovering the greater purpose of God in and through your life, I want you to shout amen. And I want us just to go ahead and just give honor to whom honor is due. Don, we are partaking of what I call spiritual gold. This is what it's all about. Yes, and of course, in 1962, the urgency that he felt, even though he was seeing such great results, stadiums filled every night, he realized he wouldn't reach the billions of so people good. until you receive right where you are, your deliverance, your healing, but also your anointing. And he ends this portion today, as he said, he doesn't just tell us what is the big question, but what it is not. It is not that you go somewhere and you're really impressed either with the intellect or with the delivery, what Isaiah 3, 3 calls the eloquent orator. And God says he's gonna cut them off mm -hmm. from Jerusalem. And so you want to know, you go to someone, he quotes saying, oh, uh, wasn't that a great message? And then you go wondering, how can I study and be like that? How can I have that vocabulary and that intellect? How can I present myself in an impressive way? No, none of that. It is what must we do that we might work the works of God in 110 nations over 34 years and with great humility through uh, God sending me out since he's left, uh, I can vouch for this reality and innumerable people. So get ready to receive the transformation in your own life and God's purpose for the church, raising you up, raised up the Jew to, to reveal uh, almighty yud Hey vav Hey Jehovah God, raised you up to reveal that Jesus is who he says he is. Amen. And Don, I really like what you say because prophecy number three was we are going to have an experience. Yesterday, 
The man of God help us understand that we are all servants of God, ministers of God. But now that I'm a minister of God, how do I produce the work of God? And you know, I heard this teaching for the very first time in 1995. Dr. Cyril preached it in London, Mission to London. And I remember, and I want, I want to give you some advice for you, some wisdom for you. Because when I listened to those words, I was looking for a magic formula to grasp, to be able to reproduce what I saw in the life of Dr. Serilo. But finally, I understood that that magic formula would not come. But I was so hungry. And then by seeking God more and more, listening more and more to this teaching, spending time in the presence of God, then God took me in prophecy number three. I had my spiritual experience. And I know and I pray for each one of you now. Father, in the name that is above every name, you are the author of the hunger that is deep inside of their heart. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters the same way you have given us that spiritual experience that has changed our life forever. Father, we pray that you give them that they will not quit on the way, but that they will go all the way till Father heaven open in their life and give them the third prophecy your servant give us that you will give them an experience that will change their life forever and enable them to produce the work of God in their generation. We ask it in Jesus' name, and we give you praise, Father. Amen Come on, somebody amen. just go ahead and give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. I want you to know something. This Facebook, YouTube, podcast, School of Ministry is not a spectator event. You are being called in by the voice of through the prophet of God to come from the sidelines and get back in to the destiny, get back into the purpose of God. It's true. The Bible says that no man should think more highly of himself than he should. But I want you to know something. The Bible never says anywhere that you are to think so low of yourself. I want you to know that thinking little of yourself is not a virtue. It's not the will of God for your life. You thinking like the one talented servant, I don't have what Don Mandel has. I don't have what David and Teresa Cirillo has. So why should I feel like I can do anything? And that one talented servant made such a mistake by thinking so little of themselves that they hid their talent. And I want you to know that God is bringing you and I out of hiding. God is bringing you and I out of insignificance through this Proof Producer School of Ministry. God is bringing you and I out of fear and out of failure. I just want to encourage you, like Mark said, Brother Srilla prophesied to us, you are receiving an experience. This is not just a bunch of words. This is not just preaching. This is not just head knowledge. This is a school with a difference because this message did not come through a man in his library, but this message came through the school of experience. This message is the life of Mara Cirillo. If you were literally to open up his spirit, you would see inside of him this message, proof producers. This is the heartbeat of Morris Cirillo. His heartbeat is that God would use your life. The last thing in the world he would want is you just putting him on a platform, putting him on a pedestal. Yes, we honor, we incredibly honor the life, the ministry. We wanna be like Mara Cirilla. Paul said, be like me and follow me because I'm following Jesus. 
But I want you to know Mara Cirillo's greatest joy, Teresa, David's, our greatest joy is to see so many of you who are not just connecting every day, but you're sharing your testimonies of how God is taking you out into the highways, into the hedges. God is taking you and bringing you to the point of human need. It's not just all preaching, but it's loving like Jesus loved. It's feeling what God feels. It's hearing what God hears, and then it's doing what God does. So Father, we do thank you today, Lord, for your word. I thank you for every student. There is not one. There's one watching today. And you are like Jonah. The Lord said, do this. And you said, no, I'm going to do that. But I declare today through proof producers, the word of the Lord is coming to you a second time. God hasn't changed his mind. God hasn't changed his plan. God hasn't withdrawn his gifts from your life. The gifts of God are ready to be released through your life as never before. Let's just do what Jonah did. Let's come back to the place where we just say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Like Mary and Joseph, go back to the place where you lost Jesus and go pick him back up. My God, God hasn't changed his mind. God hasn't changed his will, his gifts and his calling are without repentance. So we love you today. Stay, 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 stay connected. Please let us know what God is doing in your life. Let us know how we can pray with you. Let us know how we can rejoice with you. Let us know how God is using your life. There is not one person that is watching, that is connecting today, that is a person of insignificance. You have been bought with a great price and there is a great destiny of God over your life. So on behalf of Teresa, David Cirillo, on behalf of my beautiful wife, Jerry, Mark, Don, you say, why do you say this at the end every day and talk about everybody? Because here's what we realize, our lives, are not built on an island. We are connected one with another. What's happening today would not be possible unless there was a chain that had links that were connected one to another. We thank God for our television department. We thank God for all of your words of encouragement, all of your support, all of your sharing. We are just a big family of God. We're so proud of you. So we can't wait to see you on behalf of them all, on behalf of our 30,000 plus students. This is Greg Morrow reminding you what Brother Srillo would remind us so many times. You are a part of God's end time plan and God has not changed his plan. and God has not planned any defeats for you. Only victory. We'll see you next time live from Legacy in Jesus name.